Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. This episode, we're covering the official start of summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. We'll give you some sights to look forward to as we stargaze during the shortest nights of the year. But first, did you catch that solar eclipse last week? Here in Chicago, it was clear enough along the lakefront to see a little bit as the sun rose. We've got here some images of that partial eclipse sunrise last Thursday, taken by Adler Telescope volunteers. Well, since then, the moon has continued in its orbit around the Earth, and tomorrow night it'll be a quarter of the way along, so you'll see a first quarter moon gracing the evening sky. It'll be right in between Leo and Virgo, and two nights later, it'll be quite close in the sky to Spica, the brightest star in Virgo. After that, on Thursday the 24th, you'll see a beautiful full strawberry moon rising in the east at sunset. By that point, we'll be officially in summer as the solstice occurs here in Chicago on Sunday, June 20th. This year's solstice falls at a bit of a funny time here as the moment of solstice is at 10.31 p.m. So the shortest night of the year will be Sunday night, and while summer technically begins Sunday, the first full summer day here in Chicago will be Monday the 21st. So what exactly is the solstice? Well, put simply, the summer solstice is the time when Earth's North Pole tilts toward the sun. On the winter solstice, the North Pole tilts away. Now, it might sound like the North Pole flip-flops back and forth, but it doesn't. It's still pointed at the same spot in the sky, roughly at Polaris, the North Star. We're looking here at Earth tonight, near the summer solstice, when the North Pole is tilted toward the sun. Something to notice is that a constellation like Orion and the other wintertime constellations aren't visible right now in June because the sun is basically in the way. Now let's speed up time and go through six months. As Earth orbits, the North Pole keeps pointing at Polaris, and the night side of Earth is facing different parts of the sky. As we get later in the fall toward the beginning of winter, constellations like Orion are now on the night side of Earth, and constellations like Scorpius in the summer sky are blocked by the sun. The constellations are seasonal because Earth orbits around the sun. The weather is seasonal because Earth's axis is tilted. Here you can see the axis is clearly tilted away from the sun on a night in mid-December. But remember, the axis didn't move. It's still pointed at Polaris. What did move was Earth around the sun. So on Sunday night here in Chicago is the moment when Earth's North Pole is tilted most fully toward the sun for the year. Although we'll be on the wrong side of Earth to see the sun at that time. Summer brings short nights, but it really makes up for it with amazing things to see in the night sky. Sunset is late this time of the year, around 8.30 here in Chicago. And from dark skies, you've got about two hours to wait until the sky is truly dark. But even earlier than that, you could begin to see some of the brightest stars. If you look east tonight, about an hour after sunset, you'll see three bright stars in the shape of a large isosceles triangle. Highest above the horizon at this hour will be Vega. Below it and to the left is Deneb, and to the right is Altair. The Summer Triangle is another one of those asterisms, a pattern in the sky that catches your eye but isn't necessarily a constellation or even contained within one constellation. That's definitely the case here, with each of these bright stars being part of a different constellation. Together though, they form this nice bright eye-catching asterism, the Summer Triangle. And even though it's called the Summer Triangle, it will be with us for quite a while. We're catching it tonight just as it's fully visible in the east. By the end of the summer, it'll be directly overhead about an hour after sunset. And even into late December, it's still visible in the west after the sun goes down. Now, the brightest of the three stars in the triangle is Vega. This is the fourth brightest star in the entire nighttime sky, and the third brightest that's visible from mid-northern latitudes. The only star brighter in the sky tonight is Arcturus. It's very high up, almost at the top of the sky, after sunset. The name Vega comes from Arabic, and it means eagle or vulture. It's part of the constellation Lyra the Harp, or Lyre, and indeed it's often shown as an eagle holding a harp. Deneb is the brightest star in the constellation Cygnus the Swan, 
It marks the tail of the swan, and the name Deneb comes from the Arabic word for tail. I've mentioned in other episodes how other constellations have stars that incorporate the word Deneb, like Denebola, the tail of Leo the lion. In Cygnus, you can imagine looking up at a swan in flight, with Deneb as the tail, two wings outstretched, and a long neck leading to the head of the swan, marked by the star Albireo. Albireo is a beautiful target for small telescopes. With even a backyard scope, you can split this star into its two components, one star noticeably blue and the other a golden orange color. Now, although Deneb is much dimmer than Vega in our sky, it also lies about 100 times farther away, about 2,600 light years distant. Deneb is about 5,000 times brighter than Vega, but because of its distance, it appears a bit dimmer. The third star in the Summer Triangle is Altair, and it marks the eagle, Aquila. So the Summer Triangle really has a lot to do with birds, with Altair in Aquila the eagle, Deneb, the tail of Cygnus, the swan, and Vega, the swooping vulture or eagle, holding Lyra the harp. If you have a chance to see this part of the sky from an area with very little light pollution, you'll see a beautiful part of the Milky Way running through the middle of the triangle. There's a Chinese folktale about this part of the sky that incorporates the stars and the Milky Way, with the star Vega representing the weaver girl and Altair representing the cowherd, and they are in love. But their love is not allowed, so they were banished to opposite sides of the heavenly river, the Milky Way. Well, thankfully, every year on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, a flock of magpies forms a bridge so the lovers can be together for a single day. Well, next Wednesday, the 23rd, you've got a chance to see a very interesting conjunction between the planet Mars and a cluster of stars called the Beehive. You'll be able to see Mars about an hour after sunset, fairly low in the west-northwest. It'll be to the upper left of the much brighter Venus. So Mars will be visible to the naked eye, and then using binoculars or a telescope on the evening of the 23rd, you should be able to see that Mars is positioned almost directly in front of the Beehive Star Cluster. This is a cluster of stars in Cancer the Crab. This cluster contains about a thousand stars, although you'll maybe see a few dozen through binoculars. It lies at a distance of about 600 light years, and for this one night only, Mars will seem to be positioned amongst the stars of the cluster. The night before and the night after, it should still be close enough to see both, although Mars won't be directly in front of it, so definitely give it a look. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next time.